Hi there everyone. Today we're in the Royal Society Council Room, which is a real pleasure. There are all sorts of famous portraits on the wall here, but who could be more famous than that man there? Not Keith, Charles Darwin. So Keith, what's the story behind this portrait? It's kind of sort of dark and moody, isn't it? It is. Uh, this is very elderly Darwin. He's in the last year of his life when this portrait is painted and he's wearing his old gardening clothes rather wonderfully, I think. He chooses to have his portrait painted that way because it's how most people would have recognised him. So we were just going to have a quick chat about Darwin today mm. and we were going to use this object here as our excuse. I've seen this sitting in the display cabinets for a while and I asked Keith to get it out. I mean, Darwin is famously associated with the ship, the Beagle. That's right. This yes. is a model of the Beagle. Yeah, it's a new model. It's by Bernard Fountain, and he, he very kindly donated it to the Royal Society. And it's an exact scale model of HMS Beagle. So the garden was one of Darwin's laboratories. Beagle is the other one. They're lovely things, and it's nice when you can see the details of, of how they would actually work the ships. I agree. I mean, there aren't many things I can use to put it to scale, but if the life rafts and things like the ladders are the size that I imagine they should be, my overall impression is this is a really small ship for such a long, epic voyage. So the Beagle was a Navy ship and it went on a few voyages, but its most famous by far is this second voyage because Charles Darwin was the, the scientist on board mm. and it was on this voyage that, well, he did some great science, but he also started having a few ideas and a few thoughts that became a really big deal later on. And that brings these tomes into play. What are these, Keith? So this is the account by Robert Fitzroy, who of course was captain of the Beagle, of voyages on HMS Adventure and the Beagle, a famous one, of course. So these three here are the captain's journal and then here this is Darwin's personal account which we'll come to in a minute. That's right. Let's have a look at what Fitzroy had to say. Keith, you know I love a good map and mm -hmm. these are some serious maps. Have a look at that. So this is the whole of South America, not just mapped by the Beagle Voyage, of course, or the adventure, because you have that whole yeah. land mass here. But they did contribute to it. So if we open this other map here, what are we looking at here, Keith? So this is the Straits of Magellan, named after Magellan, of course, and, and some of the mapping on these areas was done by Adventure and by Beagle. You can see the Beagle Channel there, named after the vessel. Okay, Beagle Channel, named after the Beagle. Mm. All right. This second book's where it starts to get interesting, though, because here we start seeing more of Fitzroy's account. This looks like it might be on the deck of the Beagle. Yeah, it does, isn't it? Yeah, they're dancing away and having a general entertainment there. Yeah, it says here, next morning we crossed the equator and the usual ceremonies were performed. So presumably Darwin wouldn't have been across the equator at this point before, so he may well be in the group picture there. Yeah, I wonder if Darwin's that one in the blindfold or something, who knows? But anyway, it's good fun. Possibly the gentleman with his back to you. Maybe. Maybe. Oh yeah, with the hat. We're just speculating wildly we here. Are. We probably should sit down and read the whole thing, but <laughs> we're busy people. So we see various bits of scenery with ships in the background. I assume that's, that's the Beagle, I that assume. That would be the Beagle. So you have the, the, the Beagle under sail here, and uh, you can probably just see it there in the corner. So it's, oh, yeah. it's a continual presence, often a background presence in these engravings, but it's always there. It's always clearly home for the people. They want to see it in the image. It makes me feel like a fondness for the ship to think it went on these adventures yeah. and it was always there. It was almost like one of the crew, wasn't it? Here it is not looking in such great shape. It seems to be uh, they've grounded it here for some repairs. That's right. They would have repaired it and taken the various barnacles things off the, the bottom, but they've actually named a place called Keel Point, which is where they did this repair. It says, on the 13th we anchored in the Santa Cruz and immediately prepared to lay our vessel ashore for a tide to ascertain how much injury had been caused by the rock at Port Desire. So they've hit a rock and they want to get a look underneath. Yep. So they're waiting for the tide to come down and then the ship's ashore, as we can see in this picture, and they're having a look. When on the beach at a place we afterwards called Keel Point, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was found that a piece of the false keel under the forefoot had been knocked off and that a few sheets of copper were a good deal rubbed. I love that they just name everything. Oh, what are we going to call this? Oh, we'll call this Kill Point because yeah. it's where we fix the kill. Okay, so there we go. We've got all sorts of, all sorts of adventures. 
They just don't do adventures like this anymore, Keith. Well, because they're exploring. Of course, one of the advantages of hitting a rock was then you could map it. You could put it on your chart and then the, the next ship that came around wouldn't hit that rock. So it, it is an admiralty expedition. What a time it would have been to be the librarian at the Royal Society when these people were coming back with these new accounts. And it would have been fantastic. And the Royal Society librarian at the time, Walter White, did actually mention Darwin in his diary coming along to, to, to the library. So it did really happen. Walter White. Walter White. Walter White. There you go. Yep. So Walter White gets Charles Darwin. Keith Moore yep. gets me. I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's... it's... <laughs> Sorry. So what have we got on this map here, Keith? What? Oh, look. Oh, here we go. Yes. Darwin Sound in the Tierra del Fuego. Okay, there we go. What this is all really famous for is first of all, this Darwin's journal mm -hmm. from the voyage. Look, it says on here, it says it's from the author. Yep. We don't need to go over again all the things that are in this. This is some famous, famous science, everything from glaciers to animals, of course. We all know what this led to, and I'll show you what this ultimately led to. It led to this. This needs no introduction. Tell us about this copy, though. Well, again, it's a presentation of copies. So the, the voyages of the Adventure and Beagle in 1839, presented by Fitzroy and Darwin. Here's On the Origin of Species, 20 years later, 1859, and presented by the author. Again, Charles Darwin gives the Royal Society this book. So this is a really special copy, people, because it was, again, given from the author. Isn't it lovely to think about how it all started from, well, I was going to say a nice trip. It was probably quite a long and gruelling oh, yes. voyage. Yeah, indeed. The Beagle went on a few more voyages. It was then used as sort of for various government jobs. It was actually then sold for the equivalent of scrap mm -hmm. at the time. There are people who've tried to investigate what happened to those bits of wood and its anchors, yep. but it is, it is all a bit nebulous, I'm afraid. But can you imagine if the Beagle had somehow been preserved? What an attraction it would be. What an amazing piece of history it would be. Yeah. And, you know, one of the great venues for scientific discovery. And it says here, they came across a skeleton. He says, a tolerably perfect head of a megatherium, a Bradypus. Exactly, yes. So here's Charles Darwin in South America on his most famous voyage, and he's discovering fossils. 